G'day everyone, we have another charging video, this time it's the Ionic 38 kilowatt hour. In this video I'm going to show you the charge itself and then how I actually go about in the video plotting out the curve and then we'll do some comparisons with other EVs that I've done and I'll give you some recommendations on how to use this the best when going on a long trip. Alright, let's check it out. So I met the owners of the Ionic 38 kilowatt hour, Kerry and Brad, on an online webinar that I was doing a chat for about EVs on. And uh, they let me know that they were just purchasing the new Ionic. When I first got to the charger in the afternoon, there was another Ionic 38 kilowatt hour charging up with uh, Uber, Didi and Ola in the windscreen. So it was getting used as a as a ride-sharing car. Later on, we got to, Brad and I got to meet the owner and uh, he came and told us his experience and he was doing about 30 ride-sharing trips in a, in a nine-hour shift and he wasn't needing to charge in that time. So that's a pretty good endorsement for the range, which it looks like it's around about 400 kilometers uh, on early, early estimates in Brad's car. Brad met me at the charger uh, after I let him know that I was keen to do the charging video. Only 800 kilometres on the clock. Uh, he was at 22% or something around about that. Um, and I normally like to get a bit lower than that. So we went for a drive, which was very nice. Um, I did notice that compared to the Kona, the lane key persist seems to be a bit more advanced. It seems to follow the lines uh, a bit stronger. And whereas the cone is a bit more bounce off the edge type of um, mechanism. So uh, we drove for a little while and we got to 10% when uh, the car gave a warning about uh, low battery. And then uh, we got to 6% and then it was turtle mode. But fortunately we were pretty close to the charger by then. So 6% uh, is about uh, where we start. So in this video, we did a charge from 6%, but it was just before 7%. So 7% up to 92%, which is an 85% charge. So in order to get the data for the charging curve, I spend what, about an hour recording the video of the charge itself straight off the screen on the 350 kilowatt charger. Then I come home and put the, the file, the video file onto my computer, put it into my software and then run it, th like analyze each almost second to the point where the percentages are going up. And from that, I then go into a spreadsheet and record those um, time points and because I've done it a few times already it's a bit simpler but uh, that uh, spits out a graph uh, which is the charging curve graph and then we can have a closer look at that to determine when the best times to stop are and how that compares to other EVs. So here on the graphs you can see the amps and the volts on one chart and that shows you basically how the amperage is dropped away over time the the pack voltage or requested voltage from the car is continues to go up over time as the battery gets fuller and fuller but the amperage drops to keep the the charge of the battery safe the next chart is the charging curve speed itself uh, so it's quite flat until we get uh, over halfway then it goes through a series of steps and once it gets over about 80 percent it starts going quite slow uh, just to protect the battery uh, how does the ionic compare to say the nissan leaf which is a similar size battery or the BMW i3s which I've previously done 
Well, you can see the BMW does the best. It maintains a, a very strong charging curve up, right up into the 90s and then drops down gradually. Whereas the the Leaf and the Ionic, they, they get to a certain point here and then start to drop down and go slower and slower. So BMW's got the best one out of these three at the least. When you compare it to, say, the Model 3, which is getting like 192 kilowatts and, and then slowing down, and some of the more expensive ones, you're, you're really not in, in the same ballpark, really. Uh, even the, the cheaper-end MG ZSEV uh, can charge into the 70s and 80s. So a uh, bit behind on the technology... Perhaps they're just trying to make sure that the battery's, you know, safe and doesn't suffer degradation. So, so recommendations on taking this for a long trip. Well, these batteries that are around about 40 kilowatt hours, when you're using them on the highway, you're probably only looking at a maximum of 200 to 250 kilometres of complete range. So if you allow for the fact that you're not charging right up to 100 and you're not discharging all the way down to zero, then you're looking at about, at, let's say, 80% of the battery capacity um, with a 100% range of, say, 250. Then you're only looking at really about 200 kilometres range. So in this instance, it's you're probably going to have to charge past 80% uh, if, the, you know, depending on the infrastructure in your area. So... Uh, that's unfortunate um, compared to some, you know, more like longer range EVs. Um, and, you know, this isn't like a super long trip uh, EV, more like the Kona and so Model 3 long range and that type of thing where you can go 400 kilometres without having to recharge. I guess if you know the, the next charger isn't... Um, well, is within 100 kilometres or so, I would, be, I would be stopping at the point where it steps down from 35 kilowatts down to, I think it goes from 35 kilowatts to 26 and then down to 15 pretty quickly. So I don't think I'd be um, charging over 75% if uh, that gives you enough range to get to the next charger. Just head off and then you can sit in that 45 kilowatt speed range if uh, there's one every couple hundred, 150 kilometres would be great. For all you Ionic owners out there, hope you found this useful in some way. And uh, big thank you to Kerry and Brad for letting me do the video with their brand new Ionic. And uh, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you on the next video.